Hey everybody, welcome to OSAP Analysis. Today we're going to be studying Guy Mendes' stack pass against Carlos Holanda. This is from the 2014 Worlds uh, Light Feather semifinal. So let's get started here. Up to this point, Guy's been smashing Holanda's knees to the side really, really well. And we'll see here when he can't smash that top knee, he's going to feed his right arm under first, underneath the leg. And hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure he's grabbing the... Uh, Somewhere along the lapel. Then he gets his second arm under. Holanda's going to go for a norm triangle. But Guy's able to defend it. And he's going to cut his shin over top of the arm. Right there. Get Holanda stacked up. Now they're actually going to stop this real quick because... The ref stops it because Holanda's complaining that Guy's pant leg is too high up so he can't get a grip. But we're going to rewind and quickly go over this entry. Okay, so we see these are the starting grips. He has one hand gripped up around the hip, other one's on the collar right there. And he's aiming to try to smash that top knee to the side. Holanda's doing a good job of keeping it out. So there goes the right arm in under, and you see Holanda reaching in for this collar. Interesting that Guy doesn't really fear the triangle or anything. I think it's in part because of the collar grip, so that hand can't reach to control this sleeve. And it's not like his arm is deep inside anyway. He's going to go under to get the second one. And then here Holanda goes for the, the no arm triangle. And he has that collar grip. So it kind of substitutes for where Guy's arm would normally be inside the triangle. We see that Guy's defense to this is he gets his right knee right at the hips, right there, and kind of starts to sit back and either relieve the pressure or pry his head out. Regardless, Holandis feels like he can't get it. And then the right shin is going to chop over the arm. We see Holandis using his left arm probably uh, on Guy's sleeve right there. There the knee goes down to pin. He's going to step this leg out wide. And you see he's trying to stack Holanda up and keep his hips propped up. So we're going to fast forward through the ref, adjusting them. There gets the key pan back down. And now it's going to be the second part of this move. So here you see Holanda has his hips down. Guy's going to lift them up, get his hips underneath. And now he's going to kind of duck his head out to the side in a moment. For the final pass attempt, which is right here. Gets his head out to the side, trying to dig it in through that space underneath the femur and the rest of the body. See Holanda pushing on the face a little bit. Ruff tells him to stop. Holanda gets his left arm back under to keep defending the stack pass. And you see as Guy pressures in, Holanda is able to slide out to the side so he's not getting tilted and his hips aren't dropping to the mat. And then in a moment, Holanda's going to be able to recover his leg back to the other side of the head. There it is. And he's going to drop his hips down to the mat. And that's the final defense of the move. So we're going to rewind and take a look at some of the finer details. So this is where the ref resets them. Now, one of the most important things with the grips that Guy has, you see that he has both lapels. Now, the great thing about having both lapels in the stack position is that your opponent can't shoulder walk or use his head to kind of like slide backwards. Normally, if you're on bottom, when someone tries to lift your hips, you try to relieve the pressure by allowing your body to move along the mat. But with these two grips, they anchor the shoulders in place. So you'll see as Guy lifts up and pressures forward, you see pressures into the knees and Holanda's hips have to lift up because he can't relieve it by moving his shoulders back. From here, Guy's going to use his knees to prop under the hips a little bit, and then he's going to drop his own hips underneath. Right there. So now he has his hips, or you could say like his uh, lower torso, keeping Holanda up. You see Holanda's trying to go after the sleeves, but Guy's hands are really anchored in. The feet are posted here on the mat. So 
So at this point, see, he's moving up even higher. I think here he has the knees under again. I think he went back up onto his feet. But you just need something behind these hips here to keep them propped up. And now what we're, we're going to see in the moment, yeah, right there is the switch. So let's take a look at it again. I want you to focus on this shoulder. Now this shoulder is going to take over the job of propping up the hips. As his head tries to get in through, right through this little gap right at where the leg meets the rest of the body. So this foot steps out and you see the shoulder duck behind. Head goes through. Hard to tell what's happening with the right knee right now. It could also still be propping up the hips. But eventually that foot is going to step out to the outside. And he's going to try to like drive through. You see this foot is part of Holanda's defense. If this foot's off the mat, the hips will just drop to the side. He's also propping up his hips a little bit with this forearm right here. Connected there. His right hand went from going to the sleeve to pushing right there along the shoulder while holding the gi. It's interesting that he decided to let go of all of this to try to push his way out, to push the head out. Because here it looks like he's very, very dangerous at like getting past. But you'll see he's going to recover his own position. Like if he sees that he can't push the, the face, so he's going to slide this arm back underneath. Now, as he pressures forward, you see he's kind of walking with his elbow. So as I was say, saying before, uh, when you stack up the hips, normally you want to relieve the pressure in a very similar manner as Holland is doing here. But he's doing it off to the side so that the hips don't fall this way. And he keeps trying to drive through. There's a chance that he thinks that he may be deep enough to warrant the guard pass. That's a possibility. And there you see the foot posting again. Now what's going to happen is, Holanda, once he pushes this head off of him and gets a little bit of space, he's going to recover this leg back to the other side. So there he really goes to try to push. Kind of moves himself back a little bit. Gi relieves pressure, and you see how he goes back down to the knee. And this is where Holanda gets his leg back to the other side. And there he goes. So now they're back in the same position where they kind of started, where he's stacked up. He still has both collars, but this time what Holanda is going to do is with this hand, he's going to switch down to the shin. So you see how the knees are propping the hips up? Watch, he's going to grab the shin here, kind of lock out his arm, and then he's able to drop his hips because Gi can't follow with this leg. So we're going to watch it one more time. There he goes. And you see he's able to kind of slide back a little bit. So probably the collars weren't really pulled in as much as they could have been. The other thing is you'll see that with this leg here, he's going to use the back of his hamstring to kind of push Gi's shoulder, which helps him push himself back. There he goes. And then he gets the hips back down. As long as the hips are down and not propped up, you're pretty safe in the, in the stack pass. So we're going to rewind to where the ref is. Just gonna rewatch this in regular motion. He's getting both collars, being forced to stack the hips up, uses the knees. See Holanda trying to push on those sleeves, but he can't. And then Guy's gonna duck the shoulder under, bring the head to the outside. There he goes. And his right hand is going to switch to the collar right beside the shoulder, trying to push him off. Tries to push the head, or if tells him to stop, pushing the face. Gets his arm back under his legs, tries to relieve the, the pressure, kind of walking with his body and his arm. Use that right arm to push Gi away, gets his leg back to the other side of the head. There he goes. And now he's controlling the shin to get Guy down to his knees and drop his hips down right to the mat. So I hope you guys like this analysis. For more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook.